I feel like we're at this cusp of something very strange happening. Like we're in the middle of it right now, but we're at the cusp of something very strange where all it would take is one massive world event, one map to, to completely remap how we, we view each other and how we view things. It's very disconcerting to me. It is. I mean, it feels like without that one big world event, we're not that far away from that right now. Right. I mean, there are parallel universes right now that exist on things that you would have thought everyone can accept as a basic fact. Like what? You know, um, uh, I mean, Syria, yeah. you know, the white helmets. There, there are some fairly serious people saying the white helmets are, you know, some kind of media front for Al-Qaeda or Al-Nusra. Would you explain you know? the white helmets for people? So when there's a when there's a bombing and a building collapses, they go in and, and drag people out and get the medical attention as, as quick as possible. And people think that they're somehow or another involved in it. They're a front. Yeah, to to and and the, the footage is faked in order to drum up sympathy for the rebel-held areas. <sighs> I mean, that's I've I've heard you know serious people say that serious um, people. Yeah, yeah, not 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 loons on Facebook. I've heard you know like um, journalists or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, Seymour Hirsch, I think, has has walked it back a little bit since, but he said that in the early days. Why do you think he believed it? I read a really interesting article about him just a few days ago. Where was it? Um, I forget what what it was. It was you know the not expose, but a really good look at look at look at him. And I think he's just spent his career believing rightly that the government lies about all kinds of things, and that's got him into a point where he thinks, well, they always lie, no matter what. Mm. Um, so, and I, it's happened to a lot of journalists: uh, Robert Fisk, uh, Seymour Hirsch, um, Martha Gellhorn. I mean, one of my favourite war correspondents of all time. I reread some of her stuff recently, and and the first batch of war reporting she did, I think, is the the best war reporting I've ever read: Spanish Civil War, Vietnam, um, and then she spent twenty five years writing novels, and then later on wrote about, I believe it was the Yom Kippur War, and was denying that massacres had happened and saying, you know, oh, Arabs lie, they always lie, there was no massacre, and we now know there was a massacre, or well, there were massacres um, in the aftermath of these of these wars. Um, so I don't know what happens. I mean, maybe if you just do this for too long, you just become so cynical um, mm. that, that you're open to these things. But it's, yeah, I'm amazed that Seymour Hirsch is, is open to that idea. <sighs> when the, the very people that are calling it, the very people that have boots on the ground and that are in these war zones are, and calling these things, when they become cynical and they become jaded, that's when it gets really, really sketchy and, and, we rely so heavily on people like you. Like, there's, I'm not going over there. Yeah. You know, Jamie's not going over there. Look at him. <laughs> you but, know what I'm saying? I mean, in, in, and you wouldn't be able to really get, like, I know people that have gone to Venezuela and they come back and they go, I don't know what the fuck is going on over there. I don't know who to believe. I don't understand yeah. it. Venezuela is a very strange one. And I get messages all the time. And, you know, I've had Abby Martin who goes over there and she has one take on it. And I have other people that I talk to that have a different take on it. And I do not know. I don't know who to believe. And I think you'd have to go over there and do, you'd have to spend a lot of time to try to figure this out. And it would have to be the entire focus of your life to really try to parse it out. I think that's true of a lot of conflicts. I mean, yeah. you know, one of the one of the one of the drawbacks of doing what I do is I'm covering seven or eight things at, at once. So, yeah. so I feel like I'm not expert enough in even Afghanistan, where I've covered you know I've covered that more than any other. Um, but but Venezuela is an interesting one because it's there's there's such a left right divide on that. And if you support the opposition, then you find yourself alongside John Bolton and Donald Trump, um, yeah. which means that a lot of people are going to automatically attack you. Right. Um, right. Automatically. Yeah. Even if it's correct. And and I think it's, you know, we can say without a doubt that Maduro has destroyed the economy there. Maduro has uh, imprisoned, beaten, killed journalists. Um, there is a movement there that do want genuine elections. Um, but some people will say, well, just because George Bush in another area or John Bolton in this era support the opposition, therefore the opposition must be illegitimate and the information coming out must be must be false. <sighs> And I wish people did rely on on people who actually went there, but it yeah. doesn't feel like that. It feels like they rely on the, you know, the guy behind the glass desk on the on the news with the, they with the loud opinion that. rather Always. than the people who are actually there. Well, we still have this idea in our head that the the person who's reading the news is the authority, you know, that Don Lemon has the inside scoop, or whoever it is, you know. And I think it used to be that those guys would spend twenty or thirty years traveling, and then they'd get the cushy job behind the glass desk in the studio. Mm. Now it seems like you can go straight to the cushy job behind the glass desk. You know? Well, we just need someone who's relatable, who can read a teleprompter, 
you know, who fits the profile that they're looking for, whether yeah. it's Fox News or CNN, you know. And also the information is there. You know, there are fantastic documentaries, articles being written about all of these conflicts. Right. People aren't reading them. Well, w with something like Venezuela, the, the real problem is you have two sides. You have two different versions of what's happening. And it's if you're if you're not educated in that country and you don't understand their politics, it's very difficult to figure out who's telling the truth. Yeah. Same with Syria. Um, yeah. Yeah. 